Well, hello folks, welcome back and it's good to have you here. Now at this point, everybody's dying to get to the finish line and you all think that this is what's coming up, okay? You think I'm going to set up an array of tables and then loop through the tables or the collections, you know, whatever. Uh, you think I'm going to loop through that stuff and uh, do an update, okay? That's what everybody is expecting as they watch this video. However, this is Node.js. If this were a PHP tutorial, this would be fine. But Node.js is single-threaded. That means that if we have lots and lots and lots, hundreds of tables, let's say, or collections to update, then that could potentially hold up and jam the whole server. This pattern here is synchronous, which basically means uncool. We need to do the same thing, but in an asynchronous fashion. Now, there are a few different ways that we can do this. However, the method that I've decided to go with is to use the new async await feature, which recently came out for Node.js. Now, since async await is new, I'm going to give you a quick reminder of how this works. I've got an empty Node.js set up here. You don't need to do this. You can just watch. And I want you to imagine that we've got some functions, okay? Something like this. Okay, so here we are with three perfectly ordinary JavaScript functions. You've seen this kind of thing before, and there is nothing new here at all. Suppose we wanted to do something that involved going through each of these one at a time. Well, one way is we could use promises, which look something like this. Now, this is taken from the scotch.io website, which really is an incredible website as far as tutorials go, by the way. But when it comes to promises, I don't know about you guys, but this is a structure that doesn't really look too nice to me. It's kind of just unpleasant, you know? So we can achieve exactly the same effect using async await. So let me show you how this would work. And in fact, let me just comment this out and just forget that those functions exist for the moment, okay? I'm going to make up a little bit of simple JavaScript here. I'm going to say const get my info equals, and we'll be all modern and use those double arrows. And I'll just say something like var, or how about const even, since we're being all modern, my name equals David, and then I'm just going to say return my name, okay? Now, if I go console.log, get my info, what do you think will happen when we run this? Well, you know the answer, right? It's going to say David, and there it is, okay? I'll show you again. David, pretty straightforward. That is basic JavaScript. Now, this might all look a wee bit strange, but don't forget that that's exactly the same as just doing that, okay? So, there we go. And there we go, okay? Do not be scared of the fat arrows. So, that's an ordinary JavaScript function, really. However, we can go in here and add the word async. And if we do that and run that, then now it's returning not just the name David, but a promise, okay? So now we are making this function behave like a promise. So remember, folks, an ordinary function returns a string or something like that. Maybe an array or an object or something, right? That would be an ordinary function. However, when we add async, then no longer is this thing behaving like a function. It's behaving like a promise and a promise that resolves, in this case, to the value of David. Now, I could just as easily type something like this. And believe it or not, this old school promise upstairs here is exactly the same as this down here. So simply by adding async, 
we have now turned this ordinary function into something that behaves like a promise. And because it behaves like a promise, that means we can use it like a promise. So we could say something like this. We could say, get my info. You could take something in, you know, like um, maybe an ID variable or something like that. Then we could say dot then, and we could take in the result. And with that result, we could do anything we want, including a console.log, something like you are, and then chucking in the name here. In fact, to make things nice and simple, maybe I should just console.log the result just to show you that, as you can see, we are now back to just firing out good old-fashioned strings that we are comfortable with and everything. So we have control. And if we happen to get an error, that's no problem. We can chain the error on by saying dot catch. This would take in an error message. I mean, you can write it like that. I've even seen people just using E. But again, we can do anything we want with our error as well. Now, if anybody's watching this thinking, well, that's kind of cute, but what's the bloody point? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, let me tell you the point. You see, the magic happens when we reintroduce these other functions upstairs here, because we can chain promises together. This is the land of promises, folks, and that's the kind of thing you can do, right? We can chain these promises together and have them behaving asynchronously. So let me show you what I mean here. When we say something like get my info, we could say const my name equals, and we can say await, yes, yes indeed, this is the other part of async await, and it's fantastic, Ola. We can say await, get my first name like so. Now, what that's going to do is, is it's going to say, look, fire off this get my first name thing, and just when that is done, when that's finished, then give me the result and I'm going to move on to the next thing. And next thing we shall do, because we can chain these little beauties together, something like this, and we can say something like, my last name is get my last name. Don't forget, we are adding in our await command here, which makes all the difference. We can say, my city is await, then we can say get city, like so, and then at the end of all of this, we can say, well, actually, anything we want. We can say something like, uh, how about maybe return hello, um, then we can just, actually, I'll use template strings and maybe make life easier. So I could say something like, hello, and then we would say something like, my name. Actually, that should have been my first name. And all the excitement. <laughs> so we could say something like, my, hello, my first name. Uh, and then the same actually with my last name. And then we could just say something like, you are from, and go something like that. Okay, so we could do that. And if we run this, you can see that it says, hello, John Rambo, you are from London. So what just happened there? Well, I'll just tidy this up. We had three tasks to do, right? And I'm saying that I'm now going through those three tasks asynchronously. I'm actually using promises, but I'm writing the promises in a very cool, modern and nice way using async await. And I'm saying that when we do this, we can have our server working more efficiently. We can have loopback doing multiple updates and all of that without slowing down the server. Can you handle that? So let's just imagine, um, just for a bit of fun, let's imagine that this get my info was not called get my info. Let's imagine it was called something like uh, sync usernames, something like that, okay? Well, we could use this and we could go here, let's say, and let's just, I'll comment this out for clarity, right? But let's imagine if we were to say something like uh, const 
tables equals and we were to say something like members now this is just an ordinary array okay orders you know buyers hey whatever jokers whatever clowns i don't know anything you want but we, we could have an array of tables you know how to do arrays right that's pretty simple we could have this sync usernames thing taking in our array of tables and then what's it going to do well this is where all the action happens we could have a function somewhere let's just chuck it here uh, in fact let's have it upstairs here so imagine if we had a function like this that was called something like update table okay and imagine that this took in a table name now, I'll just do a little console log for the moment, and I'm going to say now, updating, and we'll add on that table name. Okay, so we have a little function. What does it do? It updates tables. That's all it does, folks, and it's very, very simple. Well, check this out. If we bring this sync usernames back into the frame, we can take in our table array like this, or tables as it's called. Now we can do a for loop. It looks something like that. It's going to be looping through the different tables, okay, which is pretty straightforward, and I'm sure you can handle that. And then with each of those items in the array, we can say await update table, and we are now passing in tables on that element of the array like so so now we can have this kind of vibe here now i'll just say all finished okay and we'll hit return and if we have a look here you'll see from the terminal that it's saying now updating members orders buyers jokers clowns and everything all finished the magic, I'll just clear this out because we don't need it. The magic of this system is that we are effectively looping through all of the tables, but we are doing so in an asynchronous fashion. We are respecting the technology, using the technology the way that it was meant to be used, and we are building some incredible stuff. Now, by the way, just to take you back a little step here, if there happens to be an error, let's say, in one of these uh, functions here, we can just say something like, if my city, let's say, does not equal, I don't know, what do you reckon, something like Glasgow, then we can say, throw new error, and then we could say, uh, the city must be Glasgow, or something like that. And so if we run this, you'll see that it throws an error and it says that the city must be Glasgow. So this really is behaving exactly the same as any ordinary asynchronous promises, but the code is quite nice. I hope you'll agree. Now look, you don't have to copy any of this, but this structure here is something that I'm very happy with. And this is what I'm going to be using in the next video when we put all of this together and basically wrap this up. I'll catch you in the next video.